mean, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Reigniting not only the fire, but almost the passion. It just feels like it's been a little bit of a lackluster start for Fury, but they can finish strong. They've got three games back-to-back -back that are 100% winnable, and we kickstart here against rival esports as we head to Consulate. Well, I think it's fair to say this is a game where you've got two teams at the crossroads, guys. Both kind of, well, let's say maybe one wanting to go back up and the other one at the moment on the way down. Rival, as we talk, are in the bottom two and will be missing playoffs all together. As for Fury, well, they are on a direct path to meeting Bleed far earlier than a potential grand final. They need to shape up. And they need to ship up that standing very, very quickly. To do that, well, a win against Rival here would certainly go a long way. It would get them to seven points, would put them up into fourth, and start to get them on a really good momentum path that then puts them in a position where the last two games, knock, knock, Hasib, you would imagine they win both of those. So that's nine points then from all of their last three play days. There is one man, though, that could look to derail this Fury train completely, and his name is Suzuki. Very true, very, very true. We've seen how impactful he has been in the past. And heading into this particular player day, I have him listed as a as having an EPS of 135, 42 and 22 in the kill department. It's the Ying Blitz off the board. Two incredibly popular defensive, uh, pardon me, attacking bands in this current meta. There's been a lot of discussion around shields at the moment particularly the Monty, who will be available this evening. The Montang, interestingly, is sitting at a 52% ban rate here in Asia. The Blitz down at only 6.2. And so indicative that both teams are going to be relatively comfortable playing that particular operator in the Monty. Also has a uh, win rate currently of 48.8%, which is, there it is. Above, above the benchmark. And the Scopos, available in play tonight. Asia and South Korea leagues, the first two around the world to play the Scopos in competitive. We'll have it available to them after it was initially quarantined with the release of the new season. For those unaware, Scopos remotely controls her two robots from afar. And as that defensive operator, you are able to toggle and move between the two shells. However, if you die in the active shell, you are dead and down for the remainder of the round. So you don't get two lives, but you do have the opportunity to roam around. And then when you sense pressure, when you feel like you may die, switch back to your shell on site, which can also double down as a deployable shield. That is probably the most likely scenario in which Scopos gets utilized. That's what we have theory crafted behind the scenes. But we're not privy to what these teams have cooked up in scrims. So we're very much forging new ground and excited to see what Crit J can bring to this defensive bolt. Firstly, I love the fact how easy it is to see where the inactive shell is in terms of the outlines. So down below, and Crit J goes up above. Should also add to kind of what you were talking about there, guys, as well, but the, the health pools are separate between the two shells. So if you get taken down to one HP, up above, second floor, transfer down to basement, you're back to full health as well. The added benefit of this kind of roam game that you're able to achieve with Scopos. And yeah, I think it's going to be quite fascinating, as you said, to kind of see how these pros will bring in this operator to pro league play. And I think right now we're going to see the first instance of it where you play a basement site that has got essentially three layered floors. So first floor, second floor, and you go all the way top floor. You can play contact. And if you get into a bad fight, you end up in a, a position that maybe you are pinned down, you get stuck, you, you get stuck in a bathroom, someone's got the cross, or you just transfer out. Give up your shell, of course, but you get to then go back to basement. And that's exactly what Critchay is going to do over towards meeting at the moment. There are, of course, other ways you can play it, but Critchay does get the opening kill onto Songla. And it is in this moment here, if he feels the pressure in managers, he could look to just try and transfer back. One thing that could deny it, though, the dog could be Logic Bomb, but it doesn't matter. His teammates are, of course, getting quite a few kills elsewhere. And an early attacking round for Rival has just not gone well. That's Kit. 
100% win rate, just go post time, time to get nerfed maybe. <laughs> Unfortunately they're not the best of clears from Rival. Anticipating them to lean into the Monty more, but not the case. They do double down with the roam clear tools of the Jackal Dockerby, but unfortunately don't find value. Theory, as mentioned in the past, have proven to be a formidable team on Consulate. I mentioned before the head to head against Elevate, that 7 0 in stage one was on Consulate. A very one sided map where they took a lot of isolated fights off site and won them out. So. Critical that Rival regather themselves here. Because Fury have shown weakness this stage. Yeah, I was also having a, a quick little look as well for Rival in terms of their, you know, veto history. Uh, they don't necessarily ban Consulate early. I guess from their perspective, it's a map that they're more than happy to play if the moment arises. In fact, the only time they banned it out all the way back in play day one, it was their last ban. So in terms of what was remaining were Lair and Clubhouse and Consulate. They banned out Consulate, Elevate banned out Lair, and they went to Club, which is, of course, the most played map for Rivals. So you can clearly tell uh, from their perspective of a map veto process, Consulate is fine to get down even to Selection, even if they haven't necessarily played at this stage up until this point. But Fury, great start. A totally dominant start. I expect that really from them in this match. It really does need to be that kind of crossroads moment where they start trending upward as the stage slowly comes towards playoffs crazy to think we're already into play day five tomorrow will be play day six for asia league and then it's just one more for the regular portion of this stage and then it's playoffs time so you know there's, there's only so much time to find the form and fortunately for fury in terms of their scheduling with knock -Ock and hasib to follow after this game they can certainly build that momentum going into playoffs to make them a threat once again. No scope post here for the second round, but the Solus in play to go out as well in combination with Kayid to try and aid in wall denial. East Terrace Breach proving to be a little bit frustrating for Rival to initially open up with the MPs and Salma should be able to confirm that. And then entry point successful. There's sort of canister from the Tuberau. Late, but at least initially stalls out the first push here from Scarlet. The Monty will appear this time around and apply a lot of pressure in through Electrical. We'll see how Fury deal with it. We know how difficult shields can be to take down. They have the Legion as the pool disrupt and the Fenrir as well for a bit of crowd control. But Scarlet can post up and can play very patient here and give his team a lot of information. Does seem to be Electrical heavy though. Oh, an angle found. Songla, just a gap between the doorway and the Montang. And Lycolis will punish this Montang, uh, Montang play. Of course, Scarlet can't really move much more forward here into the site. Somewhat sandwiched between two defenders. 60 seconds. Drop now from Hinjin. Needs someone to play behind this Montang. Otherwise, it loses a lot of its offensive prowess. Scarlet wanted to get this plant down. Turns around, gets the plant. Good pressure from Hinchin, but BG Man quick to get the headshot. Plant will be successful. That's a small positive for Rival, but only a small one. At least they do follow it up with the kill. Onto Lycolis at the hands of Scarlet. The Montang proving to be quite fruitful in this round. A running crit J and a second shot found from Azuki. The star player for Rival almost salvaging the round, but a 1v1 against the Montang. I9, what can you feasibly do to beat this ever present beast? The shield man is just like the boogeyman in your dreams, stuck in the corner and just harassing you. There's nothing that I-9 can realistically do here to win a 1v1 in the post plant. The barricade is bait. At this point, there really isn't just time, surely. That's a huge round win for Rival. Oh, close. Very close in the end there. But they just hold on. Smiles all around in the cams as they watch on during that very awkward one versus one. So what, difficult what's to Vaughan take riding on the notepad? <laughs> ban Monty next game. <laughs> ban Monty. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty shocked that I made it through. But it is very much in this meta. It's a case of one or the other. 
sometimes we see both, but... Yeah, well, I feel like it was... Round. It was Zuki, though, the middle portion of this round, guys, that really you know, kind of alleviated the pressure. It's a 4v2 at this point. Here we go. So, Crit J, why are you running? Then Yellow Ping Intel onto BG, man. At that point, from a Zuki, kind of job done. Because at that point remaining in the round, uh, Scarlet is then in a position to clutch it up as the Montang. He just needed a little bit of help. Because there's a big difference between a 1v4 for a Montang and a 2v1 for a Montang, right? So, Azuki's the big linchpin as to why Rival win that round. Along, of course, with the Montang 1-1. One -one. But it does... I, I don't want to almost, like, take away the round from Rival in some ways. But they won that round because they picked a... a pretty broken up at the moment, which is the Montang. And they won because of a Azuki great double kill. I felt like Fury were the better team in that round, though. Got better shots. They were able to manage the situation and the site quite well. But, hey, it's in the game. You have the opportunity to ban it. You don't. Rival actually banned out the Blitz. Fury not opting to ban out the Montang. Yeah, for context, in terms of uh, win rates on the shields currently... I was looking into this earlier this afternoon, and I only have the EVOL stats on hand, but they'll be somewhat transferable. In Stage 1, Blitz was at 42.9%, Monkey was at 40.4%, so low 40s for both. Already in EU for Stage 2, Blitz has jumped up to 47.1 and Monty all the way up to 58%. So wow. there's been about an 18% increase on Monty. 18%? Oh, a little contact here. Azuki already in towards Visa makes contact with I-9. Talk about a rise, rising star in this region, though. Azuki has certainly turned heads, made a name for himself in his debut season. I was one that went very early, guys. I think all the way almost back on play day one or play day two. And I think everyone now on the talent team is very much behind me, though, in the, uh, the talk that Azuki is the real deal. He's proven that. Every single play day, even despite Rival as a team not necessarily finding the wins, he has just statistically been amazing to watch. Yeah, high 70s in terms of cost percentage, so having a consistent impact in a lot of the rounds that he has played so far. Only the 35 rounds compared to others, as high as 43, just due to some substitution matches thus far in the stage. But... He's been inside the server, he certainly has been dangerous. Looking over to what server stays currently, default cam not being watched by the defenses. All five players are still alive, but no one quits. He may be in a position to lurk forward. Utility being cleared elsewhere with the Rotarios on the floor is. Rahul just buying their time, but they don't have a whole lot of it left. 40 seconds on the clock, and Azuki actually does fall, but traded. Yeah, not a lot of time. I mean, you don't have something like a Montang this time around to help facilitate that entry play behind it. Everyone has to start now moving around. Still really good positions being held as well for Fury. Long desk. PG Man can actually still play vending. Okay, late incendiary, and he got them both. That is an incredible swing from BG Man to find two kills coming out of vending despite the flames burning in front of him. Hold on. Not much that Scarlet surely can do here. As long as Crit J just hides and plays the time game. Two seconds, quit, uh, the kit does get acquired, but it really wasn't any actual time, guys, to kind of then get back, play site, get plant. Crit J plays that really nicely, but it certainly did get a little bit spicy towards the end of that round. Yeah, good work from Crit J. Just found refuge over towards the bathroom, I believe, and played into the clock, which was nice. Just a couple of oversights there from Rival. The shotgun up close was able to deny Izuki, and whilst the trade was pretty clean, vending largely went unchecked, despite having the likes of the Flores maybe to flush that position out, or certainly the incendiary later into the round, but even that util dump wasn't enough to dissuade BG Man from swinging and finding a couple of important kills, all but confirming the round there for Fury. So, back to basement we go, and the scope post will reappear indicating that once again there will be a fall off ram employed Bomb by fury by well you know what's interesting about it though is that the scopos can do it individually you don't need the the team second floor roam because you kind of think about 
I'm trying to think of like other maps, for example, like where you'd maybe you know employ this kind of roam. Uh, and it's all really kind of dependent on the team, how aggressive you want to get. But regardless, usually you'll send a couple. And I'll say a couple as like maybe two. Two to three max. Like you would probably go more than that. To help keep rotation pathways secured. So one will kind of hold like a main stairs, for example, right? And then that way someone else can go play contact and then rotate back down below. The Scopos doesn't need that. The Scopos doesn't need other people to help it if it gets pinched or if there's a cross set up and it gets stuck in towards a bathroom or a, you know, you know, box office or something. Like, you can literally just transfer out and that's the power of it that I think we're really going to see get unlocked by these Pro League teams and how aggressive you can get. You can even, you know, if you get taken down to 10 HP and you don't get a kill, you still just transfer out and it's like you've reset back to, to square one. It is incredibly powerful. And you put it on a player like Crit J, perfect for a team like Fury. Crit J has a license now to just be completely over aggressive to the point where, you know, he might die every now and then on it, but he is far more likely to have impact. They also have to clear him. They have to respect the scope boss. They have to actually try and push into him, deal with him. Deimos, I think, is a really good, you know, counter to it in the sense that you can kind of track it down and, and put the pressure on early, create that 1v1. But at any point, he can also just transfer and give it up without even making any contact. And then you've wasted so much time second floor for one player who's not even there. Well, Critchay hasn't moved the other shell on site, and Azuki has snuck forward to yellow. If he gets the sound cue on the swap, Critchay is instantly going to die. In the shell. So that's certainly something to keep in mind if Azuki's position is unchecked and unpressured by the rest of the defense. And it happened right on cue. Yeah, there you go. That, it, that is a really good point you brought up. Yeah, if, if that shell that is inactive is being watched and is known that is something you've got to be incredibly careful of and i think that's also probably a learning lesson i think that's a complete learning lesson right there crit chase we're going to think ah oh, maybe i shouldn't be putting the shield like that out in the open so that if i want to be able to transfer back i need to know it's safe i need to know that's not being watched i understand the shield in a sense that it kind of acts like a, a really big deployable shield but as soon as you want to transfer if someone has eyes on it from like bot yellow then well, that's the outcome. That's a big round win, uh, well, big moment in the round for Rival. Smart from Azuki, smart from Rival. Pressure the scope pass up above, force him to transfer back, and then kill the other shell. And Azuki will continue to lurk in this position, but eventually taking down BG Man from the long range with that DMR. Nitro to follow up, and Rival again lacking pressure in towards the objective, getting cut down elsewhere as I9 doubles down. Hinjin, low on HP, so do Jackie Wu, attack that initial fight. And it will be another round win for Fury. They just have that extra 10% about them tonight. Mm. And that was the expectation for this matchup. It just feels like they're, they're that team in this particular matchup that, as you said, 10, 15% better across the board. They can kind of deal with certain situations very, very well. Even if Rival, I thought, actually in terms of a calculation standpoint, played the first portion of that round well enough, where it's like, okay, well, Crit J's roaming above. We've got to clear him. Let's deal with him. We'll bring the Deimos. And then Azuki's like, I'm bot yellow. I've spotted the other shell, put pressure on him, force him to transfer back. I'll get a free kill. That whole portion of the round is done really, really nicely from Rival. Like, you can clearly see there's a hallmarks of a team here that understand how to play and what they want to do, but the execution is just not quite at the level of a, a, a team like Fury who has international experience, who realistically should be fighting to go to the major this stage, and there is that 10 to 15% difference between the two teams. If this rival roster were to stay together and keep practicing and keep screaming and keep improving and keep playing, you know, Asia League, there's every world in which, you know, a year from now you find success with this roster. The harsh reality is, though, a guy like Azuki probably gets picked up before you even get that chance. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't get to see the kill there onto the scope post. Again, just to reiterate and we touched on it as well. Important going forward that teams are considerate about where that second shell actually is positioned in towards the site. To find balance, you do want it to act as a deployable shield and allow for different playmaking opportunities on the objective, but you've also got to be mindful that if attackers are able to lurk into positions with line of sight, that they do essentially get a free kill on the swap, and it pretty much negates the entire point of the operator in the first place. So, it was well played by Azuki in that previous round, and unfortunate probably not to double down and maybe find more from that yellow door position, which was heavily invested to, into by Rival. 
and maybe just indicative that their attacking patterns at the moment are a little bit more linear than is required to take down the likes of Fury, who are going to have the ability to rotate and adjust their hold accordingly. The Monty prepped here from Scarlet. Maybe indicative that we are going to see a more direct hit here from Rival. We'll need to be mindful though of vertical pressure up above. Double stack from BG Men and I9 on second floor as Dark makes his way up as well. I don't love Rival's chances if they go direct here, but we'll see if it works. Scarlet picking up the pace through Piano. Hasn't really spotted a whole lot. Now he certainly will though. Nicolas has got a task ahead of him here. This is where you cannot panic in this situation. Like, Hollis is actually not panicking, but there's only so much you can do. He basically needs to call for help and needed someone to shoot the Montang in the back while he was getting, well, shielded. Three versus three, though. So Fury understanding that, of course, Rival have picked up the pace, tried their best to kind of get back over towards Piano and Expo, but Scarlet on the Montang was able to get in, get the kill, get the plant down, do quite a lot on that op. Songla wins the battle against I9, who really did need to win that 1v1 with BG Man still up above. Now he has to drop. Now he has to play more direct in towards the site. Drops down the hatch. It's looking like Rival should be able to find a second round win. Yellow Pink Intel though, over towards Bot Spiral. It's Jackie Wu standing out on the lion. BG Man, you don't have time. Why are you holding the corridor? Move, son. There's no time left. Round is over. Even if he had got that kill, there's 10 seconds. He does get it. A quad in the round. Songla, though, peeks out. Fist bumps from Scarlet in the air. He's happy with that round, and as they should be, a well worked and calculated round from Rival. Yeah, it was just the last second Lion scan sling the push there. I do wish that, that was actually visually shown on the hunt, but. Yeah, it did just let that push, but there was really no time anyway. Unfortunately, it crumbled apart on site itself, and the vertical denial. I overestimated its impact in that round. I was questioning if a direct hit would actually be able to work. I trusted Fury up above to be able to deny pressure, deny potentially that plant from being executed, but clearly not the case. And Rival again abusing that Monty well. Yeah, I mean, if it's there, use it, abuse it. There's no time really to worry about what's right, what's wrong, and... You know, you kind of look at good old Davey over in Oceania League and, and Prodigy and how they've basically said they are a shield team, guys. And I wish more teams were a bit more open like that and happy to just be like, you know what? Yeah, we use the shields. And they're strong right now. We're going to use them. Clearly for Rival, the two rounds that they brought the Mon Montang, they've found success. Now, ultimately, you can't use it on every side and it's going to have its gimmicks here or there. But once again, we go top floor and they, they just don't opt to bring it. They haven't won a round without the Montang. Something that you might have to just kind of look at and consider and be like, okay, maybe if we don't want to use it on this site, we might just try and find a way to force it anyway. Attackers have located a bomb. Well, we're very likely to see it in the second half. Like, Olus has the most playtime on Monty here in Asia so far. 24 rounds. That's double shed in second for Elevate, so... We know Fury going to bring it to the table more than likely. As you mentioned, Rival unable to find the success without it. Monty not selected here for round six. Final round of half. And you could probably make a fair argument that two rounds is still a very strong performance from Rival, given the discrepancy in skill between these two. And attacking into Consulate can be tough. See if, though, if they can maybe push it to a third. The Grim in play. Pumping Flash out admin side. But Fury pretty content to progress in these positions. They do have the Mamai available. I think they're eager to hold down that vending position again, and it is BG Man once more to spot that. With the magnets in play and that direct counterplay onto the Capital, it will force a bit more of a util clear here potentially from Rival, but as I say that, a potential rotation now. Indian still does have secondary hard bridge, and he may be tasked with opening this exterior wall. The impacting MPs from Scarlet. Uh, don't land. I think they messed this up. I don't know if they got any more secondaries. Yeah, Dark likely would have been able to trick the wall, and I-9 is holding from down below anyway. So that wall won't get opened. I mean, it's not completely necessary, I think, but certainly going to be a big factor and not ideal for Rival, who are already playing a pretty kind of default attack into this round. All right. 
honestly think they're a better team when they do just kind of play a little bit more that kamikaze approach with the, the Montang and try and, you know, sort of keep Fury guessing. This is exactly what Fury want. They want you to bring the Grim, the Capital, clear vending, push through, force them back to site. They can play long deaths. They've got lines of sight in towards Visa and uh, Zuki. That's oh, what I mean, Admin. Zuki in Visa, now making his way up. They haven't really done a whole lot. Scarlet now has to play top spiral. They haven't really fully cleared out this long death position. I just, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised seeing Fury just light up the kill feed. Now Smuggler does fight back. Maybe able to get in towards the default plan position. Asuki could cover. I would completely rule him out. Well, where's Songla going though? Oh, that's an interesting spot for Songla to just kind of waltz in. He's very fortunate. So plants mid meeting. This is it. I don't know what kind of read they've got, but Azuki is able to get the headshot onto Lake Collins. Plant does go down. Dark does eventually get the plant oh. It becomes a 1v1. Dark straight on it. Azuki. Jiggle peeks the doorway, gets him off. Dark is very low here on the bandit. Azuki playing this so well. But he loses out that gunfight and suddenly health margins very similar. But you, at this point, back in. Azuki, with little time remaining, walks around the corner and rifles steal that round. Well, they took a risk with the plant position, but they backed in the coverage from Azuki. And that's why I said, do not count this man out. If there's anybody inside of the server that can pull that kind of play off with the form that he is in and what he has shown so far, this stage, it's him. And that is a big round in the context of this match. Not only did they How's finally no get one watching that, guys? Without the walk Monty, into but... meeting. Yeah, I think they were happy to forfeit that control a little bit, but it was strange considering they also had presence breach, and then the, the timing on the swings was also significantly off. Like everyone got caught in a bad position, which was unlike Fury. I think they honestly. I think. They just I think got, Dark almost has guard. to push. I think at that point, when he tags Azuki down to 25 HP, you know he's on server stairs. I think you almost just have to try and push him at that point. Going back to the Diffuser, knowing full well he can basically push in from two different angles, it's going to be very difficult to win it. He had one chance, and while he still had a lot of time, I think just pushing him. Go for broke. You kill him, you win the round. You don't kill him, you lose the round, but you go back... To the diffuser and you start sticking it you just always lose the round 3-3 three, three. i tell you what it's a decent half for rifle and fury's season stage absolutely teetering on the point of self-destruction so i mean i haven't really done the you know the calculations of if they lose this guys because i think even if they do lose this they'll still go and beat knock knock and hasib but if you were to say they do lose this and then win the last two, they go to 10 points. Is 10 points enough to get them into the top three to avoid the bleed side of the bracket? It doesn't unlikely. get them top two. And yeah. no cap are already on eight. So you're right, unlikely. Which means Fury may have a date with bleed earlier than expected if they cannot claw back this game. No Monty round one. I highlighted that. Monty has been an incredibly popular pick for Lake Hollis. He has the highest pick rate in the league heading into this play day on that shield operator. But on the Grim this time around, the Crit J, their star player, the first to hit the ground. So this Fury's first attack, good. not off to the greatest of starts. It has to be site dependent, guys, in terms of the Montang selection. I guess just not wanting to bring it in towards meeting. Dark admin control. They will get the revival onto Crit J. Triple stack admin now, though, does mean you've kind of forfeited quite a lot of map control elsewhere. 90 seconds as they start to push forward. Still need to clear out a lot of positions as the Rotero for BG Ben. Makes his way in. We'll deal with that Banshee. One in towards vending is Hinjin. Azuki wants to get involved. No, falls back, thinks better of it. Look at the positioning there for Ravel. Everyone is in certainly far more aggressive positions than what we saw defensively from Fury in the very last round. Yeah, they've rotated appropriately to the push. There's absolutely nobody concerned about a CEO or a Yellow Stairs hit. So that may present an opportunity for a lurk here from Fury. 
but it's a heavy stack on this half of the map at the moment, and they're going to put full stock into clearing out this vending position. I'd like to go for a deep pot plant. That's um, nice. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Hinjin is kind of just probably panicked a little bit. Thought he could go for the swing. Jack Huey gets a freebie onto Dark, who thought he could just kind of waltz in towards Long Desk. That's a freebie. Oh, shot! From that distance with the SMG-11 and Scarlet, suddenly puts him in a very commanding position to kickstart the second half. Still double stacking long, so very difficult for Fury. Azuki, well, no one is surprised to see Azuki fit and firing in this matchup. Like Colas the solo in CO, but everyone knows exactly where he is. They are pushing towards him, hunting him down and letting their star man get the final kill. Rival have the lead. I'm not sure if this is classic Asia positivity on display, but the player cams are certainly exuding confidence and positivity at the moment, for sure. Rival again. Maybe going into tonight, not expecting much in the way of a result, and certainly playing well so far. It is the primary sites, though, and both teams seemingly having pretty significant issues attacking that top floor for the most part, so may not be the most impactful of objectives on this map may come down to basement and then split or uh, over towards the other tertiary for instance so we'll see first clear over towards vending was actually quite clean but then a lot of these fights in through the likes of split were poor site itself was held very aggressively throughout the round of rival seemingly none of those fights going the way of fury is the question was yeah, and the Scopos is out. I was going to say, the question beckons. Do we see the Scopos defensively, oh, and do we see the Monty on spot. attack? Well, yeah, it default spawns in the same position. Oh, okay, um, right. And so the onus is on the Scopos to eventually move it, but... Where would you put it? Where would you realistically want to put it? Hmm. Would you want it to be in a more aggressive position, as in used like a shield, essentially? Or would you more so put it like deep sight anchor position where you can transfer safely? Some kind of anchor position. Maybe like a pillar and force the swing yellow if they really want to get that kill, maybe? I certainly would not be leaving it in that default position unless you have a full read yellow. Otherwise, Azuki doesn't know if he's safe to switch back or not. He would know that firsthand, of course, being the one who got the, the kill in the first half benefiting from said default position so it just sits in towards admin i tell you what if you're a pro league player though this is the, the role you want you want the fun roaming scopos top floor where you have to <laughs> hunt you down you can take fights you can and and you know what seeing him push out a balcony like that guys i think it's a really good way where if you kill someone you get tacked back a little bit your low health transfer back easy you can certainly play a, basically a different game than everyone else in the server And they have to respect you. That's uh, it, the caveat as well on top is they can't just ignore the scope of above. Fury focusing their intel gathering efforts currently in through the first floor. Not sure if they have a read on the scope post. Hinjin wins the first fight. That's dark on the ground and one of the hard flank watch operators off the board. Interestingly, we do see the gridlock in play, even post bar. Particularly popular operator, Jackie. We're lucky to get away with his life. Oh, what a shot from I9. I don't know if they had any intel on the Zuki pushing down spiral, but I9 was in the right place at the right time and he gets the headshot. Deals with the scope horse. Now, that shield does stay there, of course, provided it hasn't already been destroyed by Fury. But the shell is still active. The shell, also, in terms of its camera, is still usable. Of course, Azuki can just not operate it. He is dead. 45 seconds remaining in the round four versus four. And Songla is now actually using the shell as a shield. Yeah, it could come into its own towards the late round, especially in denying a push through breach or yellow. Pillar. So don't count out the scope those who still having impact. Not all the time remaining in this round now. BG man though, kill onto Scarlet. Good little drop as well. Angles found. Hinjin in 1v2. Jackie Wu down. Good shade. Sitting right in front of that camera. Oh, and he gets the kill onto Hinjin to close it out. Oh, fascinating round.
if you don't like the kind of round in which rival were cooking, the scope horse up above, they were they go basement, they for the most part looked like they were forcing Fury into that delayed 20 second kind of attack, but well, when Fury did hit sight, they hit sight pretty calculated, measured, and certainly didn't waste any time. Expo and piano into the ninth round. We are all tied up for what is turning out to be almost like a season defining match between these two teams. If you're going to have any hope of finishing the season strong in the regular portion, you've got to win this game. Yeah, pro tip at the end of the round there, uh, the Scopos can be malleyed like a BPC to prevent visual feedback for the defense. And I don't know if it was in the end. I think we switched off and maybe it was, but little tidbit. Still gives away the sound cue again, like BPC, but evident that both teams, I think, are very much finding their feet still with the operator and with Scopus being put in quarantine, then brought back out. I don't know how much that would have impacted the ability to scrim that operator or the willingness to scrim it, whether or not teams shelved it or continued to scrim with it. Not entirely sure, but I think those that have theory crafted effectively with her will certainly be rewarded over the next couple of weeks as everyone starts to slowly learn just how powerful she is and how she will fit into the current meta. Round nine we go and the Monty is finally brought out, but it's not like Hollis it is Crit J to play the shield. The Clash counter though. Clash has been a bit of a hot talking point at the moment as well as a decent counter potentially in slowing down the Monty. And then the rest of the team can look to play around it. We'll see what kind of attack Fury will prepare for though. Initial signs maybe for a yellow drop. Looking for swift entry on the top floor. The Clash is though there to greet them in box. And so we may see this interaction come into fruition. Rival looking to hold on to vertical control. Getting down to some very fine margins now. The kind of match that feels like it's going to come down to these sort of moments. Clash. A little bit vulnerable. I know I'm playing below. Patience, not giving away position, but the Clash moves away and loses maybe any kind of chance to get that early kill for Fury. Having now lost BG, man. They do eventually get one back and a second to follow. The Warden dealt with. Big kill for Lycolis. Crit J down in towards that hallway. And I9. Doubles down on the advantage now for Fury. A swift flurry of kills for Fury. Sees them now with a two-player advantage. Having also dealt with the Clash. And Azuki just caught wandering. Fury to retake the lead after an abrupt... Abrupt moment. Mid-match from Rival where they started to get on a roll. Fury have answered back. Jackie Wu with one, but three more required. And Crit J bot Spiral on the Montank will be certainly the most formidable foe. The flashes already land for White, makes his way in towards Piano. Does almost get the kill onto Lycolis, who does eventually drop, go down, dead, but dark from behind to finish it off, and Fury do indeed retake the lead. Yes, yeah, all work there from Fury. I-9 able to attain a good lurk play position in through Piano. I think he walked to a banshee initially, but that certainly didn't telegraph his position enough to be able to find two, remain deep, prevent the retake. Defenders During that entire time as well, Crit J was providing good pressure on top four, forcing the defense to retake and having a full read and coming back to the rest of the roster as to where those remaining defenders were coming from. So rather dominant round there from Fury. And linking that back to my earlier point, basement may be rather unimportant in this matchup. The other two sides are likely to have more impact here for both teams. It's been a good game. It certainly has lived up to the billing. Uh, we haven't probably got uh, maybe the you know, most amazing play day in terms of all the matches of quality of, of the opponents versus each other, but this one is one that because of the way the season has gone so far for both teams, looked good on paper and it is delivering. No cap bleed after this as well. Certainly another one that is going to prove to be, I think, a, a fascinating one to watch. Four to five. 
but how many times do we get into this position and a team like Fury just then take it from here? Win out the last couple of rounds and put this one to bed. I did say 7-4. There's every chance they win these last two rounds. Grim, Capital, once again, to try and clear out these positions up above, such as Vending. Rival, do they have to try and find a way to be maybe somewhat more aggressive in these rounds? Too much on the back foot. No Mon tank, no shield this time in the 10th round for Fury to play off of. So Fury did not find success last time around over towards admin side of the map. The transition towards the objective was poor. They got cut down. It was rather ineffective. So we see a pretty distinct change of attacking pattern here from Fury. Focusing their efforts over towards CEO more directly and a lurk up yellow. Critche being live droned, presumably to get in a position to vert from below. Azuki is roaming around uh, though. He was being held on repel, I think. There's somebody out there. Yeah, okay. so Azuki took the 50 50, thinking there's one on the repel outside admin, maybe, and to the right side. So he turns left. He's then dead, shot in the back of the head. Jackie Wu does find the kill onto Critche though. Tell you what, second half, Azuki has certainly not been able to have his usual impact and may be a reason why rivals just losing some of these rounds. Others need to stand up. Jackie Wu in this moment gets a big kill. And Scarlet and Songlo and Hinjin also find kills as I-9 creeps upwards through yellow stairs. Dark is able to reaffirm the numbers advantage now for Fury with 60 seconds remaining in the round. It's four versus three. They've still got really good positions both inside and outside the building. Drone to go through from I-9. They've still got five drones. Lots of intel that can be found. Q mines dealt with. Yeah, 40 seconds. Close yellow is being held. You need to find a way to be able to deal with that. They should have Execute Utility still on the Capitale and the Grim combined. And still one scan available for BG Man on the line. Big kill, big moment. Jackie Wu with his second in the round. Playing around Spiral. Fury just lulled into the sense of security with a slower pace in this round. But Rival hit the switch. And a good attacking measure, but the frag from BG Man clears out Songla, forcing him into his scope in a 2v2 now with little time. Like Cole is still in the exterior. Hops on in though in the flames and he burns alive and the man is dead at default. The Vulcan canister too strong. And even if the flames had have extinguished a little bit earlier, the nitrous salt you would imagine would have done the job, guys. 5-5 five, five, and a really well worked round for Rival considering Azuki really wasn't in that round after losing his life outside of yellow. Yeah, I should correct my prior point. I think I said basement might be the unimportant site. It, I did mean top floor at the time, and it's just been such a defensive stronghold throughout this particular match. Um, just the one attacking win round six. Every other time it's been defensively held strong, and that's even with admin pushes and CEO pushes. Now we've seen both variants, and neither has worked from Fury. So back to the drawing board on that site for them, having struggles through the execute portion of both different attacking attempts. 30 seconds on the clock here, and Dark got caught off guard. That was a big moment in the round. Left for the two versus three. BG Man did a good job clearing that utility, but unfortunately, yeah, the flame's still up, and the Nitro would have finished the job more than likely, as you mentioned. Tactical timeout to come through. And Fury discussing how they're going to try and get this one across the line. I, I do still think. With top floor locked, a regulation win is very much the expected outcome, but Rival certainly have shown that they also need to be respected in this match as well. Having a look at some of the statistics as well, most notably for Azuki, guys, one and three on the entry. He is eight and eight overall, but the entry conversions have just been lacking from both teams. I've had 10 rounds. Obviously, prior to this, only twice have we seen that round get converted off the back of an opening kill, both times for Fury. Ten seconds left. Give a 
Shout out to, of course, Manic for providing the stat directly. Hashtag Manic stats. <laughs> Hashtag Manic to a major. Oh, that has a ring to it. Need to get that back up. It's been a while. Hot minute. Well, it was Manic to SI, wasn't it? And that worked out. I so think, maybe well, Manic, I think Manic it, to a major. Um, oh, it could be wrong, and I'm sure Rob will let me know later, but I'm pretty sure the original version of it was Manic to the major. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, yeah. it was. And then he just skipped that and then, part and, and went straight to SI. <laughs> and then it was just like, nah, we're just going straight to SI. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the major. <laughs> so 5-5, five, five, break point. Who can get match point? And realistically as well, I, I love these rounds when it comes to these regular season play days, guys, because you win this, you guarantee one point, and you deny the other team the ability to get all three. Yeah, and every point could be critical if you're out to dodge bleed in the bracket. So don't discount the importance of these next few rounds. I-9 again has found a lurk position West Corridor, and he's found success in a similar play before. One for one trade. Uh, that, wow, they traded each other. <laughs> what a turnaround from Azuki to even really get that kill. So Vigil and Dockerby. Hmm. Well, no logic bombs from I-9, but Azuki dealt with. Feels like maybe even for both of the teams walking away from that particular engagement. Wait, did they misdrain Jackie Wu? Surely not. I was just about to say any roam threat now dealt with, but Jackie Wu is off site. And that drone from Kruje did not spot him, as far as I'm aware. So unless they have another one here for the Yeah, lead, you're right. I mean, don't. based on this movement, yeah, he's got no idea. Easy That's kill. A real, that is a really bad misdrain from Kruje. That is really Easy bad. drop down, and now Jackie Wu can play sight with everyone else and still has the Nitro Cell. One of the Boogie Auto Breaches was used, though, before Crit J's death, but. And now certainly more limited, and BG Man playing towards Bot Yellow. Banshee dealt with, and as we looked away, he loses his life. I think Hinjin playing off of the noise contact from the Banshee. Certainly feet spotted from Dark, but he wouldn't be surprised to see that, knowing that they're all in basement now. 40 seconds left. Where else would they be? Like, Cole is still on the exterior, outside garage. They've got to make entry into the site. They need to try and force their way in, hit some critical shots. Otherwise, Fury will be unable to secure all three points from this match. As Lycolas eventually shuffles his way in through Garage. The flash... But the swing is successful from Songla. And at the same time, the Nitro Cell as well explodes to find an easy kill. And Rival will secure one point. They will secure a match point. And Fury, their season is in tatters and about to be totally obliterated if they lose this next round. Well, I predicted Fury to be one of the top teams, if not the top team in the league at the beginning of the stage. I also just predicted Fury to win this game 7-5. I have been wrong on both occasions. That site for Fury was a mess. Lousy, lazy droning up above proved to be so costly. I-9 got away with that one there. A one-for-one -one trade was a good outcome. Jackie Wu did nothing special to play that position. He just did not get droned. Easy kill, the rest of the push crumbles, lack of presence up above, force to feed sight. Oh, this would play be... by rival, landing their shots, but Fury, they're just not playing up to the standard that we have known them to play when it comes to playoffs. Sure, sometimes their regular play is going to be a bit iffy, but this is kind of taking that storyline to another level tonight. Well, the most damning stat, it's the fact that this would now be Fury's fourth loss in a row. Even attempt to go and find the last time that happened, good luck. Either it's never happened or years and years and years ago. Certainly at no point recent. At no point for this team at this level with what they've been fighting for in terms of majors and SIs and what they've been able to achieve overseas. Four losses in a row. It would... It would seriously... It, it would put them sixth at the end of play day five. Sure, they still play Hasib and Knock Knock after this, but a loss here surely puts them on bleed side of the bracket, and that is basically a death sentence more than anything does. And... 
Most importantly, yeah, you can win those last two games against the South Asia teams, but you've got no form, no momentum really going into playoffs outside of beating two teams that you're expected to beat. Huge I round mean, here. Maybe it's for the betterment of the bracket. If they play this quality of Siege in a best of three lead, it will be one of the most one-sided best of three game finals we have ever had in Asia. Uh, they have gone backwards at this stage. I don't know if that's meta-related, internally related, or what's up, but it's been disappointing. And things are going from bad to worse. It is. It's just completely crumbling now. It's like an empire falling before our eyes apart. Fury for so long have been great. For so long have been one of these top teams in Asia, but now they have crumbled for stage two, 2024. They will not be one of the top dogs. They will not be able to make top three. It will be the long way as well. You don't get to directly go to semifinals. You don't get to be on the opposite side of the bleed bracket. You are going to have a very tough and tall task to get to the major after losing this match. It's going to be a real wake-up call for Fury that they need to desperately turn their stage around. I-9 with a death mark. Not even activated, still 60 seconds and wanting to just play off of the Montaigne, trying to just maybe pick up the pace and go for broke. But that's two out of three members now known in terms of their position to rival. There is that death mark now onto the Kaiyid of Songla. And they've done this without Azuki having one of his pop-off games as well. Locked into the pistol, avoids the Nitro Salt, pistol out for Lycolis now on the Montaigne, dancing with Scarlet around the pillar. He does get the kill. And shortly off that death mark, I-9 gets a crucial kill, but suddenly BG Man in a 1v3. All three points on the verge of going to rival unless BG Man clutches up in a 1v3 scenario. There's the drop though to avoid the shots flinging around the head of Jackie Wu. Huge celebrations and smiles for rival as Scarlet slams the desk in excitement. He moves his camera and they cannot believe what they've just done. They have knocked off Fury. They've taken all three points. Fury have lost four games in a row. Monumental moment in Asian Siege and rival rewarded for playing really well tonight, Rob. Uh, I don't think many people expected this score. I, uh, I'll be honest, I am mortified at what I've just seen. The attacks from Fury are not convincing. It's not there. That's not the fury we've known and loved for years and years. And I'm talking years and years. Sometimes we say that and it's a bit of an over-exaggeration. No, this roster we have loved for such a long time. And to see them go four games down in a row here for the Asia League after having such a dominant performance throughout even the last four stages, this is really concerning. And the alarm bells have well and truly rung. Rival esports, though, guys, let's just take a moment to, to <laughs> applaud what an unbelievable storyline they have for themselves now. Absolutely. This was some really, there was some really good siege on offer tonight from them. And also the way in which they showed a clinical nature to close out the game, right? Three back to back defensive rounds, a perfect rotation to close things out. And even despite Fury, trying so hard it, it, they tried multiple different attacking strats on these objectives and they still were not working out so they were counter stratting or reacting better than fury arguably a top two team um heading into this particular stage so for them super exciting and i tell you who else is going to be absolutely laughing in the background it is bleed if fury are not competitive and they are arguably the team closest to bleed who can take them down now? Because that gap may well now be widening unless another team can fill in the void that Fury is now creating. Well, Xenox, we have to look to elevate for that, right? There's not there's not too many conversations outside of what teams could really compete for that second place of Asia now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, elevate for sure is definitely going to be in that conversation. I kind of want to bring it back, though. One of the stats that you kind of brought up, Rob, um, while we were casting was, of course, that uh, opening kill conversion stat. On the last two rounds, when the game was on the line, that's exactly what Rival were able to do. Both converting, Azuki, Hinjin, both got opening kills. They converted, they got those rounds. Big shout out to Jackie Wu, who was sensational in this game, a player that we've, you know, highlighted for years now, I think. Yes. Uh, quite, quite a while. Um, and I think this was a, a really defining moment for him when, you know, a, a guy like Azuki, who's been in that spotlight over the last few weeks, 
still played fine, but he didn't play like Azuki dropping 20 and roaming around doing whatever he wanted, right? So he was a little bit more limited. And Jackie Wu stepped up, and I think the whole team stepped up. We, we saw some good moments from Scarlett, Songla. Um, and I think that for Rival, it, uh, what a confidence boost it must be for them as a team to get this win and what it can do for them, I think, moving forward for the remainder of the stage. Some say Rival Esports, and others go who? But we welcome in Jackie Wu. That's right, for the first time yes. in a long time, Jackie Wu. <laughs> Hello. What, Hello. What an unbelievable performance. You have got to have a smile from ear to ear. Yes, like I've been waiting for this moment so long time. Like I have transferred so many teams, not so many, but like <laughs> it's been a hard time for me. Yeah. And like for finally, I met a team like Friendship R6, you know, so Aww. it's going to it's going to be so great. And after like we won this game, like we definitely going to get more experience and, you know, more happy. But you know why like Azuki didn't show up next uh last week? Why? Because someone <laughs> overslept the game. Oh no. 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 <laughs> but, are you kidding? But no no no, I'm not kidding. But it's fine. <laughs> like it's fine. you know like because Azuki bring us back today, okay? Like he's <laughs> he's been Azuki always. So like I forgive him, okay? Like, that's really good. And everyone showed up today, like, Scarlet, like, he's not being brand dead. And yeah. Injin, <laughs> like, he's he's new to the stage, for, like, and I think he's already performing so well, like, compared to me when I first entered in the Pro League. And, yeah, he just needs confidence. And he, he, he gets so many entry kill today. I think that's a really good thing. I don't know, like, at first, I kind of be nervous, like, because... It's kind of be like a long time not not playing the pro league right now, but I see my like teammate perform really well and mm. it brought me back and yeah I just kind of like becoming really good right now. Not I it mean not really good. Yeah, it seems like obviously the vibes from the team, uh, from what we saw on the cameras, were quite high from that win. It feels like you guys have been building towards it. Was that kind of, I guess, the mindset for this stage coming in? Was this is a learning experience? We're not there to sort of maybe compete against the bleed just yet, but we can learn a lot this stage, taking then into next year. Was that the mindset for this stage? Yeah, it is. Like, of, of course it is. Like, I always tell them, like, before the match that, you know, like, just forgive it. Don't, don't, like, mind the game, win or not. Just, just learn, you know, because, like, you all from, like, new to the Pro League competitive, like it's it's really like being lucky and like to like be here you know and just just learn and we will see like are we gonna make it to the like next stage or what just i think like this mindset will like let us play more happy and more like i don't know like relax and you know we can show like how we are like actually we're not just like keep nervous and you know performing bad like january now, we saw a little bit of Scopos from your team tonight, and we saw it a bit from Fury as well. Are you expecting to see a lot of that operator this stage? How do you see it fitting into the metal? Ah, I think that operator is not, is not really good. Like, I don't know, <laughs> like, bring a teleport up into R6? That's not really realistic. I, I mean, like, and, like, the, the, the robot sounds like, sounds terrible like when you're hitting yes. like the robot or even like you're sprinting and the sound is really weird like i don't know i don't like that alps at but, all but you can but, send azuki on the roam and you can get like three kills and come back to side sure, i mean that's good for you guys. like yeah it, it is good like but <laughs> he he just complaining the sound like the sound is not really good for that uh jackie like obviously this is the first time we've seen you in a long time and uh, I think I speak on behalf of all three of us when I say that we're really happy to have you back on the desk. Happy to see that it's all smiles for the teams. You guys are actually looking quite competitive this stage. And, uh, well, we wish you nothing but the best for the remainder. Do you have anything you'd like to say before we let you go? You know, I think I, I, I really like, like, like this team right now. Like the, like the vibes where everyone is like hardworking, you know, mm. like except for Azuki, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like everyone is like really keeping the good vibes during the competitive. That's that's what I want like 
yeah through a long time ago but mm. it's really good yeah oh, i hope you. everyone can support us Oh, mate. I mean, after tonight, I think you're going to have a lot more fans. Jackie, really, thank you very much for joining us. I'd love to keep talking to you, but we're going to let you go. We'll speak Thanks, to you Jackie. soon. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. I... There's, oh. there's, I will say this, like, straight I off him. the bat. There is, <laughs> there is a lot of uh, similarities between the Australian talent team and rival. They call it Friendship R6, and there's always <laughs> one lazy carry on the test. <laughs> it's just... And like I don't know what else to say. There are a I lot am a of Zuki. similarities. You, I no, am a you are not. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not a Zuki in performance. You're a Zuki in the sleep. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> a performance from rival esports. And guys, I mean, like that's probably one of the more wholesome interviews I've had in a long time. Jackie Wu seems so happy on that roster. Yeah, absolutely. The vibes are very much upbeat, and again, goes back to just how critically important team dynamic is in rainbow six you can sometimes b not be the greatest team strategically or the best team mechanically but if you're able to be above average in both and then have that extra layer of, of trust and, and friendship and a willingness to get along and work together towards a common objective that can be such a difference maker and i posed uh, after that game what's going on for fury is it the matter is it something internally? If it's something internally, then that becomes very difficult to fix and they don't have a lot of time to turn it around. So yeah, so. it's going to be super scary for them for the remaining portion of this stage. They should be able to bag points, but that run towards playoffs and a potential spot at Montreal is in the most doubt it has ever been for yep. at least a year or two, for sure. And Jake, obviously this completely just shakes up the bottom of the table. Not only do rivalry sports get out of the bottom three, uh, but Fury are really at the uh, at the mercy of a potential knock knock victory later on today against Diewalls. That would actually see Fury in the bottom two in play day five. Mm, what? Yeah, I mean it's ridiculous. I, I will say this though: Fury now play knock knock, and as I've said it a couple of times throughout the um, the broadcast there. So the the expectation is that they should win those games. Um, if they don't win those games, it's uh, it's, gonna it, be very, very it's game over. They lose those. They yeah. even lose one of those games, and the team is chalked. Regardless if they make playoffs, there will be no threat in playoffs. I will say that now. They lose both of them. That, that's an impossibility. That will not happen. And if it does, that team is done. So they they are absolutely done. Done. So is. You just you, you're out with all the saying today. I love my big calls. This is coming from the guy who was championing Fury um, at the beginning of the stage. I yeah. put them at the top of my power rankings, and I truly did think that Bleed would have more issues than they have, and Fury would be able to capitalize. But it has been the complete opposite of that so far. Yep, Fury uh, all but dead in the water at the moment, so things are starting to shake up at the top and the bottom of the league. But of course, we were talking about the top of that. Bleed sits atop the mountain, and they're up against no cap after this.